Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gemba Red, and today we're going to be talking about fans and how they're a cheap form of cooling for red light therapy panels. And when I say cheap, it doesn't mean the negative connotation that they don't work very well. In fact, they work very well at, at cooling devices and cooling things down. Uh, I just mean cheap in terms of they're literally a very low cost way of, of keeping something cool. So when we have LED panels like this, that, you know, you might be relatively familiar with, uh, you see it's usually got a fan built into the back. And that's because you've got an LED array like this, and uh, the LEDs are not perfectly efficient, so maybe 70% of the electricity that these consume actually gets wasted as heat, and about 30% is the light, you know, is the optical watts that we measure as the output. So, you know, there's some variability, but, you know, there's a good percentage of the energy that turns into heat. And then you have to manage that heat. You can either use these heat sinks, which are thicker plates of metal. Usually they have this kind of uh, ribbed kind of de design. And this finned design helps create more surface area. And surface area helps with that natural diffusion of the of the heat. So you've got you've got two main ways to to cool things down. It's not just one way where everyone was used to seeing these fans and all the panels. And then like like most things in the red light therapy industry, you just keep seeing the same thing over and over again. Oh, you should be six inches away. 660, 850 are the best wavelengths. You know, and I've I've had to go through and debunk those all those things. And the same thing with fans. You, you've seen fans uh, a lot, especially in a lot of the earlier reviews. Um, they say, oh, if you don't have fans, your device can't cool down, it'll overheat, or you can't get enough power output to get a therapeutic response. Uh, you know, again, all of those are fallacies. There are devices that don't use fans in the clinical literature, so it's just absurd. And, you know, you're starting to see, you know, especially now nowadays, you'll see more and more devices that don't use fans. Pretty much all the handheld battery-powered ones are not using fans anymore. Uh, you know, again, so it keeps them a little bit thinner, keeps them lightweight, and maybe they have a timer so they automatically shut off so they don't get too hot. Uh, but again, if you can balance the heat load with a thick enough piece of metal, like this is our Gimba Red Beam, uh, if you've got a thick enough metal and you've got the nice fin design, that helps keep it cool and it can run pretty much forever. You know, I, I can keep this running for, for all day, every day. And, uh, you know, it doesn't overheat. It's not too hot to the touch. Um, you know, it's, it's a very safe thing. So that's what it takes us a little bit longer to develop these things. It takes more nuance in understanding, yeah, maybe the intensity is a little bit lower, but you don't need blinding amounts of intensity to begin with. And, you know, to balance that heat load. If you don't know what you're doing, you're just trying to make the highest intensity thing. You you know you're just going to slap a bunch of cheap fans in there, and it'll be good to go and off off to the market. And you can rank number one in in someone's ranking that you got the highest intensity thing. So again, Kimber Red, we know uh, the other problem with fans is that it creates some magnetic field. It creates that milligauss. Um, so you can see we're reading 0.4, you know, milligauss. So it's it's pretty low, kind of ambient milligauss maybe we get a little bit from this when we turn this on i've got this little setup turn on my fans and again alex fergus measured the noise output from fans i think that was a very smart thing to do because fans can be kind of annoying i remember some of my earliest prototypes that had fans <laughs> the fans were so loud and so annoying and some of those cheap panels you can get uh on alibaba can be really like wind tunnels but uh, you know most manufacturers are using quiet fans these are our fans from our reboot and our, our overclock they're, they're the same they're interchangeable um but you naturally get a bigger mag magnetic field. This, you know, when we're right up on it, we get 100, 200, because just the principles of how a fan works is how it, how it circulates the current and how it creates that magnetic field that spins the fan. So it's inherently higher magnetic field. There's not much you can do about it. And we can even do an interesting experiment. I can actually run these fans off of a battery, which a lot of people say, oh, you know, if you're battery powered, you should be able to trust that it's low EMF, which again is uh, kind of an absurd 
statement because if you've that's generally true if it's dc if it's a simple design like like one of these that doesn't have any fans or controllers or pulsing frequencies or whatnot then you can trust something simple that's battery powered is ultra low emf because it's dc it's direct current it's not connected to your alternating current grid i can connect these to a battery all right they're completely connected by this 12 volt battery make sure it's on and now we turn it on and you get the exact same problem milligauss up to 160 uh, when you have fans that are powered by a battery so it's not just the battery you have to watch out for so that helps but if companies are adding back in fans especially for smaller devices handheld devices that you need to use closer to the skin to get that good effect you know the the guidelines for most panels they tell you to be six inches away that's partly because of the fans and the internal drivers they tell you to be six inches away to avoid the emfs i didn't come up with this this was a marketing gimmick to help appease the people who were afraid of emfs uh, especially a lot of the early adopters were were concerned about emfs and so you know i listened to my customers and i've tried very hard to eliminate eliminate the fans as much as I can so all of my, my smaller devices uh, are not using fans. So just to summarize, I'm going to uh, read off a quote from a blog I was reading on designing proper lamps and LED devices, um, you know, because a lot of times I say the obvious things in this industry. I say things that are really obvious that any industry expert should know and would know, but conveniently, everything's kind of upside down in the red light therapy business that oh you know everyone's using fans and everyone's standing six inches away and everyone's using 660 and 850 and if everyone's doing it then you assume it's the right thing to do and then i come along and i start talking about this the real science and obvious things and uh, suddenly you know oh he's he's being just being controversial and biased and whatnot so anyway i'm going to read this quote that inspired this this little video um from a blog on how to design uh, corn cob la lamps, which is a, a new lamp uh, style that I'm trying out. So this industry blog uh, on the cooling section for how to make corn lamps, they say this, some corn lamps are manufactured with built-in fans. And while this does sound useful at first, the fans have proven to be problematic. Essentially installing a fan is a cheap way to make a corn lamp. The fans motor will die out long before the LEDs fade out and fail. And that's only if the fan is not stopped by insects or dust before its full lifespan can even play out. And I thought that was, that was, a you know, applicable. It, it applies to any uh, lighting device or LED device where maybe the LEDs are rated for 50,000 hours or more. But if the fan fails before the LEDs, then you're naturally going to have a bigger problem. And you might have remembered that we did a little video where we tried to fix a first generation juve that was all clogged up with dust. And once the fans got clogged up with dust, the LEDs burnt out. And so obviously it didn't last the expected lifetime. Same problem with, with fans. Either they're going to get clogged up with dust and, and dirt, um, which you should be kind of blowing it with the computer air to try to clean them out every once in a while. Uh, with a heat sink, with, you know, if you've got a proper heat sink device that doesn't rely on fans, obviously there's nothing to break here. It's just a solid piece of metal. There's no failure mode. So, you know, if a fan fails, then your device is going to fail shortly after. You know, this thing can't really fail. It's just a hunk of metal. So um, w there's a very obvious advantage to the longevity if you can balance out that passive heat it's kind of self-cooling mechanism. It takes longer to, to design. It costs more money to get more metal and, and get the geometry right. Uh, but it will last a lot longer. So, you know, it's a big question. You know, again, I'm trying to shine a light on. It's not that fans are bad. They, they have a purpose. They're cheap. They're lightweight. Uh, you can use them anywhere. You can, uh, you know, sloppily design whatever and slap some fans in it. Or you can take more time. It'll cost more money. It'll be heavier, uh, which again, we, we might not want weight when, when we have heavy devices. But it should last longer. It should still do a good job if you balance the heat load. So that's about it. We, if you've got fans, they are a cheap way of cooling, but they're very effective at cooling. But they could fail in the long run. They could die out. They're 
they're light, lighter weight than using more metal, uh, and, and they'll save you some money. Um, but you know, don't let people say, oh, you absolutely need fans, uh, because that's, that's kind of a fallacy, you know, and, and anyone in industry should know you can keep stuff cool with proper passive cooling with heat sinks and whatnot, uh, and balancing that thermal load properly and you shouldn't have to rely on fans you know again i don't want to be a charlatan and say say you know fans are always bad there are cer certain circumstances that fans are good i'm still using fans in some of my larger panels but i'm trying to move away into devices that should last a very long time by getting it with just the heat sink alone and not relying so much on the fans uh, so again you need to know the pros and cons you know there's the magnetic field there's the emfs that are inherent in these fans and by removing them we help make our devices much lower emf so some people like that um so again it's all pros and cons uh you know you need to be aware of what your choices are and don't let you know everyone making the same rebranded product you know and everything looks the same everyone's copying each other and you assume that's the best thing to do uh you know unfortunately i have to go against the grain and show you that anyone with proper engineering and industry experience knows you can you can do things a little bit better so thanks for tuning in hope that helped